So on this channel, you know, there are two things that I'm particularly fond of, Bargain Tech and Chromebooks. So after having shown you the HP 14A Chromebook, it was only a matter of time before I took a look at its younger and much smaller sibling, the HP 11A. Let's take a look. So I'll go ahead now and link to that video on the HP 14A Chromebook if you haven't seen that yet. And then we can get into this video talking about the 11A. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see I dropped this tweet out the other day. I picked up this as a grade A refurb. So it's basically a customer return for just £115. That's about 160 US dollars. I think what happens is typically somebody gets one of these home and freaks out when it hasn't got a caps lock key and returns it. And then you can pick up a Chromebook in mint condition. Uh, let's get into the unboxing and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so it came in this plain brown box as advertised. As I mentioned, it's a refurb. It did say it didn't have the original box. That's not a problem for the price I paid. And if you look at it, it's really well packaged. And here it comes out of the final layer. You start to see the machine. That's the bottom side of it. And you notice straight away, it's got the speakers on the bottom there. Um, white look to it as with the HP uh, 14A. It's a slightly rougher texture on the top. Not the thinnest machine, but certainly by footprint, one of the smallest, so smaller than a sheet of A4 paper. Um, connectivity wise, if we take a look around on the left hand side, you're going to see it's got a full size USB A port there. So nice to see that that's still available. Round on the right hand side, you've got a micro SD uh, card slot. You've got an LED indicator light for the charging. You've got the charge port itself, which is USB C and you've still got a headphone jack there which is really good to see um, opening it up again you know the build quality feels sturdy but not great it's very plasticky keyboard fairly uh, clicky very shallow keys not much feedback there the trackpad i think actually for this price point feels pretty nice um, you know nice and tight responsive but yeah these keys not not amazing as you may expect what is really impressive with this Chromebook is the fact you're going to get updates up until June 2028 with it. It's got the MediaTek MT8183 processor. So that's the same one as you find inside the Asus Spin 311 that you may have seen on the channel as well. Uh, so performance is, is decent. Um, just trying to power it on to show you though. And of course it's flat as you like. So I need to get that onto charge. So we'll get the power brick out of the box next. We'll get it onto charge and then look at performance and anything else that you should know about this Chromebook. Uh, so here's the brick, nice and lightweight. Um, so nice to know if you are going to travel with it, it's not going to weigh you down. Having to take that away if you need more than a day's worth of power. Battery life of the unit itself is impressive as you may imagine. I think part of it is it's Achilles heel, which is probably the poorer screen, but it's probably actually drawing less power. So you're probably getting much better battery life out of it um, so that was the power brick and then the uh, UK plug here of course I'm in the UK uh, just to the side of it so let's get that plugged in and see what it's like on charge so the charge light will remain amber while it's charging. It'll turn to this solid white when it's fully charged. Keep in mind when the machine is in standby, that light does flash on and off. I know that annoyed some people on the 14A. On this machine, it's only on the right hand side. So starting the machine up for the first time, it's all as you might expect. You're going to connect it to your Wi-Fi. You're going to log in with your Google account, and then it's going to start to sync everything to the machine. And once you've done that and you're in, you can start to use the full Chrome browser. You can use Android apps. You can also install and run the Linux beta on here. So really functional, really good performance, certainly on a par with the Asus Spin 311. No coincidence that they both share the same processor, the MediaTek MT8183. The difference between the machines, of course, is more the build quality, the uh, the lower quality screen on this one that's not touch, the clickier uh, shallow keys, the smaller trackpad that really isn't too bad. But again, think about the price of this machine. Uh, it's a great machine to just have on the couch as an option. It's a great portable travel machine. Look at the footprint of it here. Um, less than a sheet of A4 paper. And if I actually show you it here stacked on the Asus Spin 311, you can see it's even smaller than that machine. The Asus Spin 311, uh, very portable, very small as well. It is a convertible machine. But just look at what HP have done with this budget 
11a i think it's really clever really great to just have it in the bag or pick it up to take out and not really uh, have to care about it so much because it's not a really high value machine i expect for a lot of students or for children if you want to give the kids a machine this is maybe an ideal one that you're not going to worry about too much um, but really portable really small uh, very impressive and what i do now I'll also show you the weight of it because you've got nothing to worry about there either so coming in at just 1,075 grams for the HP 11A. Uh, and just because I can, I'll weigh in the Asus Spin 311 as well, another really lightweight machine, and just remind you of the weight of that. And this is coming in uh, just slightly lighter, so just four grams lighter. So I think HP have done really well, considering they've been building this machine to be sold at a budget price point. So as mentioned, you can run the Linux terminal on here as well, no problem. That obviously opens up the opportunity for more apps, more games that you can install and speaking of gaming um, just to show you how Roblox runs for example not a problem you're obviously not going to have a touch screen to interact with it you're going to use the keyboard or like I am here you're going to use say a PS4 uh, Bluetooth controller so wrapping up my thoughts on the HP 11a Chromebook is it worth buying so for the right reason and at the right price yes so as a second machine as a machine you can give the kids and not worry about uh, as a machine you can just have sat on the sofa for when you need to quickly get online and check something yes absolutely so are you going to have an amazing screen and speaker experience no are you going to want to type on that keyboard all day long probably not but are you going to be glad to have this in your backpack not way much when you just need a machine with a physical keyboard to quickly do something online yes um, are you going to be thankful that it's got updates all the way through to june 2028 for the small price you might pay absolutely so it's definitely worth considering as a backup machine a second machine a travel machine or a machine for the kids just basically something that you don't have to care about too much you're going to use it as much as you like and just not worry about it definitely worth considering with that said please do consider giving the video a like if you've enjoyed it it does mean a lot please also consider subscribing to the channel if you're into your chromebooks and budget tech and go ahead now and check out what else is on the channel that you might want to watch cheers